This week we are learning volume of cylinders and prisms. So unlike surface area, which is just if you're painting the entire outside, volume is like if you're filling it up with water, how much um, like cubic inches or cubic meters could you fill up that shape with, with a liquid. So the formula to find the volume of a cylinder is pi radius squared times height. So basically what you're doing is taking the area of the base, and we know the base shape is a circle, so we're just finding the area of the circle, and then we're multiplying it by the height, and that's going to tell us the volume of a cylinder. So for this example, we know, let me go ahead and erase all my markings real quick. Okay, so we know the diameter is 20, but I don't need the diameter, I need the radius. So make sure you cut that in half if they do give you the diameter. The radius would be 10 meters since the diameter was 20. And we know that the height equals 10 meters. So we're going to plug in 10 for the radius and 10 for the height. Also, remember to use 3.14. Whenever you're typing this in your calculator to evaluate this answer. So we would have for the volume 3.14 times 10 squared times 10 to find the volume. So our volume would be 3140 cubic meters. And then you would just type that in and submit. Next example, we have a cube, and to find the volume of a cube, it's the area of the base times the height. So this big B is area of the base, and my base shape in a cube is just a square. So to find the area of that square, I would just do length times width. And then I would multiply that times the height. So really, whenever you have a cube or a prism, the easiest way to remember volume is just length times width times height. And since they're all the same, 7 yards, it's really just 7 times 7 times 7 because the length, width, and height of the cube are all 7 yards. So in this case, or with any cube, you really can just cube whatever side you're given, and that would tell you the volume. So 7 cubed would give us 343. So the volume of this cube is 343 cubic yards. Moving on to a prism, it's the same thing. The volume is the area of the base times the height. Well, I know the base shape of this prism is a rectangle. And I could find the area of a rectangle by length times width. So once again, we're just going to use length times width times height to find the volume of this prism. So my length, width, and height would be 7 times 10 times 15. So when I multiply the length times the width times the height, I get... 1,050 cubic inches. So now we have a triangular prism and the formula is still the same for volume, it's just area of base times height. But this time to calculate the area of the base, instead of a square rectangle, we have a triangle. And I know the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So we're only looking at this triangle right here, okay? We're not looking at the height of the whole prism. We're only looking at the height of the triangle. So let's go ahead and calculate the area of that. I know that the base of this triangle is five and the height is three. So one half of five times three, one half of 15 would be 7.5. 
So now I can replace that and plug it in for the area of base in my volume formula with 7.5. Now I'm looking at the height of the entire prism, which is 8. So to find the entire volume of that triangular prism, I would do 7.5 times 8, and that would give me a volume of 60 cubic inches. Okay, this time we have to work backwards. We know the volume of the cylinder is 1,846.32. And we need to figure out what the radius is. So I know the formula is pi times radius squared times the height. And let's go ahead and fill in what we do know. So we don't know the radius, but we do know that pi, we're going to use 3.14. And I know the height is 12. So let's go ahead and simplify what we can on that right side of the equation. 3.14 times 12 is 37.68. And then I'm still multiplying that by radius squared. So in order to get radius by itself, I would divide each side by 37.68. And when I divide 1846.32 divided by 37.68, I get 49. And that would equal radius squared. So now just to solve for radius, the inverse of squaring it would be to take the square root. So we would take the square root of each side and the square root of 49 is 7. So we would find that the radius would be 7 inches. Okay, same thing. We know the volume of this rectangular prism is 30,272 feet. And it's going to be equal to the length times the width times the height. We know the length and the width, but we don't know the height of this prism. So let's go ahead and fill in what we do know. I know the length is 32, the width is 11, but I don't know the height, which they're saying is R. So instead of using H, we could just go ahead and call that R. Alright, so let's simplify what we can. 32 times 11 would be 352 times R. And then I would divide each side by 352 to isolate R. 30,272 divided by 352 is 86. So my height, or R, would be 86 feet. Okay, last problem. We know the volume of a cube is 8 cubic feet. Remember that a cube has the same length, width, and height for all of its sides. And we know that if I just take one of those sides and cube it, that would give me the volume because they're all the same. So the volume is 8, we just want to figure out what one side is. Oops, let me change that to a cube. There we go. So if I know that 8 equals s cubed, the inverse of cubing something would be to take the cube root. So I would take the cube root of each side, and that would tell me what 1s equals. And the cube root of 8 is 2, so one side would have to be 2. Okay, and you could check it if I had a cube... So just a beautiful drawing of a cube. And I know that my length, width, and height were 2. 2 times 2 times 2 would give me 8. So I did it correctly. Alright, that's it for this week. If you guys have any questions, please let me know.